welcome back to Chris's Creative Corner, episode four. My name is Chris Cole. I'm an author with five published books. There are more books that are coming out um, next year that I am very excited about. And currently we are talking about my romances, the romances that I've written that I've published through JMS Books. If you're interested, you can check them out. They do a whole bunch of different kinds of queer romances, which I think is very exciting and needed in this day and age. First things first, these are questions for Chris. This is a new thing that I'm introducing where people message me questions and I answer them as a way to help you get to know me better and know my work better. Um, Please feel free to leave a comment, question below. We'll get you in the podcast at some point. So the first question is, when did you first realize you wanted to be a writer? So this is interesting because I kind of hinted that I first started writing in eighth grade and then in high school, and then I took a hiatus basically from creative writing and I focused on writing for television and everything as I went through my college degree. It wasn't until I left the news in 2015 that I wrote what would turn into the first book of my sci-fi series, and that was when I decided that's what I wanted to do. I was 25 or 26, and that was when, for the first time ever, I realized what I wanted to do and something that I felt really passionate about and really called to do. It took me a while to find a career setting where I felt the same way, and I found that in the counseling program. But writing has become a way for me to express myself and tell the stories that I have inside that I didn't even know existed until I started writing them out. So yeah, I've known for less than 10 years that I wanted to be a writer, and it took me five years from writing my first book to actually take the step to try and become published. And now that I am, I'm excited, and there's no looking back. I'm going for it. The next question was submitted by a writer friend on Twitter, and it has writer terminology that I have to explain. Um, It is, are you a pantser or a plotter? So pantsing is like flying by the seat of your pants, which is how some people write books. They just like have the story and go bleh and tell the story. Um, Plotters have outlines and backgrounds of characters and like character sheets, and they have what happens minute by minute, chapter by chapter, paragraph by paragraph kind of thing like they're very very detail oriented so in that regard i would say that i started out as a pantser and i am turning into a plotter the reason for that is as a pantser what i would do is i would have this idea for a book and i would just write down a paragraph of what i could see on like the back cover of the book and then i would start writing As I wrote, I would think of scenes, um, I would think of amazing things that they could do or say. Um, Ultimately, I try to really tap into, if I were this person, what would this look like? And as I've got, as I gained more experience, I realized that going through that process as you're writing actually takes me out of the writing. So instead, if I have developed the character beforehand, if I've developed the idea and what scenes I would like within the story first, instead of doing that as I go along, ultimately I feel like it gets me more into the writing process and I can write it um, a a cleaner draft um, with less editing and I can write something that actually... I feel works. Um, There are a couple stories that I've written that
In the previous chapter, Nick and Casey came home completely intoxicated after Nick came out to his parents and it did not go well. Hector greeted them and was upset about their state. Nick yelled at him and was not very nice. And Hector packed up his bag and left. Casey, meanwhile, kissed Nick while they were drinking and said he liked kissing him. And then the next morning, Casey just kind of brushed it off as they were having breakfast. And ultimately, Nick is now wondering, is he free? Chapter 4. Deal, No Deal. The answer to that question came sooner than I thought. I got a text from Hector saying he was coming home to talk. I told him I'd have dinner ready for him. We sat down to dinner after exchanging stiff pleasantries. I even made one of his favorites, rigatoni with chicken and pesto. He picked at it in silence before setting his fork down with a clatter. Did you mean everything you said last night? I sighed. I wish I hadn't said any of it. But did you mean it? I... I mean, yes and no. There are things that bother me that I haven't talked about because you made it seem like it wasn't important to you when I brought it up. He picked his fork up and swirled it in the pasta. Like the socks? Yeah. That's so stupid to me. Socks are socks. I just wear them. But they come in pairs for a reason. I don't care! He suddenly raised his voice, then dropped his fork again. Just because it bothers you doesn't mean I need to change it. Well, when I'm the one doing the laundry, you don't want me to touch your clothes, so you just do them all if you did them like they're supposed to be done. This lasted for a while. Hours. We'd never bickered like this before. It was like we were airing out all our grievances at once. There were so many issues. If you'd put the glasses on the left side of the sink, we wouldn't have to... The plates are supposed to go over there because of where the stove is in the kitchen. And it just kept coming. And why do you get to sleep on the left side of the bed all the time? I've always slept on the left side of the bed. When has this been not okay? I used to sleep on the left side of the bed when I was single. I threw my hands in the air. When you were single, you had the whole bed. I'm so sorry you have to share. My God, it's like pulling teeth to get you to realize we're both in this relationship. I was exhausted by the end of it, and my pasta was cold. I violently threw it away in the garbage and took his plate without asking whether he was done. I put them in the sink with a clatter and stood there. What are we going to do? I asked after a moment. Hector had his head in his hands at the kitchen table. I don't know but we can't go on like this. You're right. This, this isn't good. Probably the worst. I thought for a moment. Once this record deal comes through, I'll be away in Nashville for a bit recording. Maybe some time apart will help us miss each other. I don't know. I spent last night away and I didn't miss you. I gritted my teeth. That was one night. I'll be gone for a month, at least. He didn't even wait until I'd finished talking before he spoke again. I don't think I can be with someone so selfish. I looked over at him, outraged. What? I cook dinner all the time. I clean, I do laundry, I work 40 hours a week, plus my band, and I still make time for date night every fucking week. What more could you possibly want from me? Me, me, me. I, I, I. That's what I'm talking about. He stood from the table to face me. All you talk about is what you do for me. I don't care that you do the laundry. I don't care that you cook dinner. I could eat macaroni and cheese for days. You're putting effort into things I don't care about and then lording it over my head. It's just us speaking different love languages. Oh, fuck your love languages. Bullshit. He walked into the bedroom and opened my dresser drawer, angrily taking out clothes and throwing them on the bed. Every time you talk about that shit, I hate it. Just because you went to counseling doesn't make you right. It's like you think it makes you superior or something. I threw my hands up in exasperation. Fine. You win. You're right. I'm not expressing love at all. I'm simply finding things to do to hold over your head and make you feel bad about yourself because my goal in a relationship is to be a giant prick. Happy now? He got to my second drawer and started throwing clothes on the bed, not answering. What are you doing? I want you out! 
He screamed the last word so loudly it made me jump. I don't want to live with you anymore. I don't want to be with you anymore. I don't even want to remember you anymore. Raging, he threw open the third drawer and just dumped all the contents out. When he reached the last drawer, I tried to stop him, but he pushed me back. He opened the drawer and dumped it out, including a brown paper sack. Is this drugs? His shriek was so high, only dogs could hear it. I'm pretty sure one started barking outside. No, it's... He pulled out the comic book I'd bought him three months ago for his birthday next month. This... He sighed and looked at me, anger and hurt mingling on his face. You know I've been looking everywhere for this. For a while. I nodded. You had it this whole time? It was for your birthday. His face grew red. But I wanted it. I didn't want you to get it for me. I wanted to get it for myself, for my collection. I looked at him in disbelief. It was supposed to be a thoughtful gift. He shook his head and threw it down. It's tainted now. I can't put it in my collection. It will forever remind me of you. His words were suddenly like a stab in the heart. Out of everything he said, this hurt the most. You, you don't even want to remember me? He shook his head, an ugly look taking over his face. I can't even look at you. You're so two-faced. You tell me one thing and tell Casey another. You know what? I hope it works out between you two. I hope he rejects you over and over again because you can't get over him. You're so in love with Casey. You worship him on an altar that we could never have worked. My shoulders tensed. I'm not in love with Casey. He's just a friend. And you're saying we're done? Just we're not us anymore? Oh, come on. Isn't it obvious? I thought, I mean, this is one fight. We've argued before, but never like this. Doesn't this mean we can start fresh from a new place of understanding? He flipped me off. Understand this? Now get your suitcase, get your shit, and get the fuck out of my house. You can come get the rest of your stuff later. I didn't cry after that. I simply grabbed my suitcase and put as many clothes as I could fit into it. I packed my toothbrush, my box of invisible teeth aligners, my antidepressants, and my chapstick. I grabbed my backpack, and I left. I started my car after the second try, and made my way over to Casey's apartment. It was a studio on the top floor of an old town building. Beautiful hardwood floors, radiator heating, and simple curved archways. I hauled my suitcase up the stairs. The elevator was out of service, probably permanently. As I approached, I could hear soft guitar music coming from behind the door. I listened for a moment, smiling to myself. He didn't play guitar often, but he was wonderful. I had often thought about asking him if he would be willing to play while I sang, once, just to see how it sounded. I sighed and knocked on the door. The music stopped, and moments later, Casey appeared, wearing his tank top and baggy lounge pants. He took in the suitcase and my expression, and his face darkened. That son of a bitch. I'm gonna... Don't. It was kind of mutual. I'm sad, but I'm not that sad. I think it wasn't supposed to last. He stood aside and let me in. His place was cluttered with various piles of papers, some bags, and random boxes. He moved some unfolded laundry off the couch for me to sit. Need a drink? I've got some of that bitch beer you like. I nodded. Just one. I have to work in the morning. I was only halfway through my beer when I finished telling him what happened. After that, we sat and discussed music. You know, those lyrics you came up with yesterday were good. We should turn that into a song for the album. I took a swig from the bottle as I looked at him to see what he thought. Seriously, it was really good. Meh, I was just fucking around. You remember the tune? Play some and we'll see where it goes. He began strumming on his guitar until he got the tune right. Tear me up inside. Don't let me go. You're the one I love. I don't want you to know. I took over. You're my full moon, you're my high tide, you're all over me and on the inside. If the sun fades, if the worlds all die, you're the one in my soul. 
my porch light. He grinned. Nice. Porch light. I grabbed my lyrics notebook out of my backpack and began writing them down. Casey continued singing. In the darkest reaches of my wretched heart, your presence exists like a held-in fart. I burst out laughing. I'm not writing that down. God, that's hilarious, though. It's a good metaphor, right? You can feel it pressing inside. You don't want it to go. Yeah, it's still a no. He laughed, his eyes crinkling in the corners. How about is like a fresh start? Good. I wrote it down as he continued strumming. You're a new road. You're a lawn mode. No. He closed his eyes. An eased load? Yes. In solitude, you alone can make my tears dry. If all hope is lost, I can breathe a sigh. Suddenly, I found myself saying the words, I love you, Casey. He looked up, continuing to play, and gave a soft smile. I love you too, man. No, it was, it was something Heck said. He said I'd, like, put you on a pedestal compared to him. And I kind of have. You're just such a good guy, and you're so good to me. He stopped playing and blinked a few times. Um, I mean, we're friends, but, I mean, that's all. He's wrong. I tried to hide the tears. Casey set down his guitar and sat next to me on the couch. He nudged me. Don't cry, Nikki. I hate to see you sad over some guy like that. It's not that. I wiped my nose and looked at him. You and me will never be together, will we? He looked concerned, his mouth slightly open. I... No, Nick. I love you, but not like that. And through all the horrible things that had been said between Hector and me, nothing hurt as much as knowing Casey really was off limits. And yet, my words to Hector rang in my head. I'm not in love with Casey. He's just a friend. If I said it enough, it was true. Right? And that concludes chapter four. Next week, we'll tackle chapter five. Bye, bitches. I love creating chapter titles. It's probably one of my favorite things about writing. So yeah, that was chapter four from my book, Porchlight. We'll see you next week with a new episode and a new chapter. And that's all I've got. Thank you for tuning in to Chris's Creative Corner, and we'll see you next time.